What's up everyone, June with the Sushi Man here and we're going to make some traditional and simple teriyaki chicken today. Now, this channel is mainly about sushi, but as you can see, I also teach how to make other popular Japanese dishes and cooking fundamentals. So let me know in the comments below if you guys have a dish you want me to cover. And if you're looking to level up your sushi and Japanese cooking game, be sure to check out my book, How to Make Sushi at Home, a fundamental guide for beginners and beyond. It's filled with step-by-step -step recipes, tips, and tons of cooking knowledge. I'll leave links below for those that are interested. All right, now let's jump right in. First, let's go over the tools and supplies we need. We're going to need a cutting board, a sharp knife, I'll be using my gyuto here, a fork, which is optional and you'll see why here in a bit, a spoon, a pair of chopsticks or tongs, a non-stick frying pan or skillet with the cover. And if you haven't made the tiriyaki sauce, then you'll probably want a small bowl and a measuring spoon. This is one tablespoon. And as you know, I always like to have a clean, damp kitchen towel nearby. And lastly, a plate to serve everything on. And that's about it. Now let's move on to the ingredients. All right, obviously we're going to need some chicken. This is boneless skin on chicken thighs, which is what's traditionally used and what I recommend. And this is a pretty big one, probably about a half a pound or so. The skin acts as a barrier and it also crisps up when the fat renders, which keeps that meat inside nice and juicy. Now that said, you can use skinless thighs or even breast meat. Just know that it does tend to dry out more and it won't be as juicy and tender, which I'm sure you already know. Okay, next we have some salt. And you can use regular table salt, sea salt, kosher salt. This isn't really for flavoring, which you'll see here in a bit. And then about two teaspoons of cornstarch or potato starch. Either one works. And just a note here, I know a lot of times cornstarch is used to thicken sauces, but we're not going to be using it for that. I actually like to coat the chicken with this very lightly so that it gives it a little bit more of that crispiness. Next, we need a little bit of oil. Vegetable or olive oil is fine, and you only need maybe a half tablespoon or so. And lastly, we need our teriyaki sauce. Now, if you watched and follow my teriyaki and unagi sauce video, which you can check out over here, then you want to use that. This is about four tablespoons, which is right around a quarter cup. But if you haven't made this, don't worry. All you need are these four ingredients, soy sauce, meeting, sake, and sugar. Just mix all those in a bowl until the sugar fully dissolves. And I'll have the measurements on the screen. Now that's technically all the ingredients you need to make just the chicken. But I always like to add some greens, tomatoes, maybe some cucumber too. Just depends on what I have in my fridge. Broccoli or thin sliced cabbage can be great sides as well. But I'll leave that up to you. And of course, some steamed rice. You can't forget that. All right, now let's move on to prepping our chicken. So first step is to trim off any excess fat or skin off of our chicken. And how much is really up to you? I like to trim off any of these extra fatty white spots and some of the skin if it's hanging off like this. And you also want to make sure to get any little bones or cartilage that may have been left on there, like this. And then we also want to make sure that the meat has an even thickness throughout. So if there's a thick part of the chicken, like I have over here, then we want to cut it horizontally and then unfold the meat open, which is called butterflying. So we place the chicken skin side down and start towards the middle and you want to work your way out. So you want to lay your knife almost flat and cut into it slowly to open it up. And you want to make sure you don't slice through all the way. All right, this side has a nice even thickness. So now we're going to flip it and do the same thing on this side, since this is a pretty thick part right here as well. And it's okay if you make multiple cuts. The goal is to just get rid of those really thick parts so that it cooks evenly. Okay, now let's flip it back over and we're going to make some small cuts into the skin. And there's a couple ways you can do this. I like to use the tip of my knife, but you can also use a fork if you feel more comfortable. Basically, we just want to create some small incisions through the skin, which will help that teriyaki sauce flavor seep through into the meat. Okay. 
All right, now we're going to sprinkle some salt on here on both sides, and you don't need too much. Now we let this sit for a few minutes. This will bring out some of that moisture, which will help get that nice crispiness on the outside of the skin. All right, it's been about five minutes, so now we're going to use some paper towels to pat this dry. And make sure to get both sides. Next, we lightly coat the chicken with cornstarch. So we'll just sprinkle some on and spread it evenly across on both sides. All right, now we're ready to get cooking. So first we're going to very lightly oil our pan. And I like to use a folded up piece of paper towel and spread it out evenly so it gives it a nice thin coat across the surface. And then we're actually going to throw the chicken on there before we turn the heat on. This allows the fat to render slower, which makes for a crispier skin. Now just a note, if you're using skinless chicken, then you want to preheat your pan for a bit and also add a little bit more oil. Alright, so we're going to put this in skin side down and then turn it on to medium heat. And then we cook this until the skin gets that nice golden crisp to it, usually about 8-9 to nine minutes. And if you haven't made the tiriyaki sauce, then now is probably a good time. I already have mine made, so I'm going to take this time to kind of clean things up a bit. And I like to check it every now and then just to make sure it's not burning or sticking to the pan. Okay, it's been about 8-9 minutes or so, so now we're going to flip this over. And look at that beautiful golden color. Nice and crisp too. That's what you're looking for. And then now we're going to let this cook for a couple more minutes. And I apologize here guys. I used my phone to record from this top view and it started to overheat, which caused the camera to stop working. But I had my other camera still going, so we'll just switch to that. All right, it's been a couple minutes. So from here, we're actually going to take the chicken off and just set it aside on a plate. And then we need to clean the pan, so let me shut this off for just a second. And we want to get all this oil and gunk off, so I'm just going to use a paper towel and wipe it clean. And we do this because we don't want any of this oil to mix in with our teriyaki sauce. Alright, now that the pan is clean, we're going to put the chicken back with the skin facing up. And then we're going to turn the heat to about medium, medium low. Okay, from here we add in the teriyaki sauce and cover it immediately. And now we'll let this sit for about a minute or two. Now if you have a clear lid, you can sometimes see, but it's good to take some really quick peeks in between because we don't want that teriyaki sauce to be burning. Alright, now we can take the cover off, and oh man, all that teriyaki goodness. It smells so good. And then we're going to take this extra sauce in here and spoon it right over the chicken. This adds even more of that savory teriyaki flavor and help get that glaze we're looking for. Now I'm actually going to heat this up really quick so that the sauce thickens even more. Alright, that looks good right about there. Now I'm going to turn off the heat and then transfer this over to the cutting board to let it cool down for a bit. And don't throw this sauce away quite yet, we'll drizzle some on top after we plate it. Alright, now we're going to cut this into nice even strips. And sorry again for the camera issue, and I know you can't really see it here, but maybe about 
not quite an inch, but maybe about a three quarter inch strip. And then we'll just add this onto our plate with our sides. And then you can't forget that last drizzle of the extra sauce on there. And there you have it, traditional and simple teriyak chicken. How long did that take us, like 15, 20 minutes? And what is there not to love about it? Tender, juicy, crispy, savory, sweet. It's no wonder teriyaki chicken is one of the most popular Japanese dishes around the world. All right, that's it for this video. Hope you found it helpful and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And feel free to leave any questions or comments below. I appreciate all the feedback and I do try to reply to all of them. I'll see you on the next one. Arigatou gozaimasu. All right, now I'm hungry. Itadakimasu. Oh yeah, that's good. Now where's my beer?